Welcome to Chrissy's Kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, in one of our other videos, tried a, a pork pie again. Somebody claiming to be doing traditional English pork pies. It's certainly not the pork pie that I know as a traditional one. And I did brag that we're narrow in recipe, so I'm going to do it now. Okay. Um, it took a bit of time to find the, the recipe book where it was all written down, along with my Lincolnshire sausage recipe. Uh, again, which is a traditional Link Lincolnshire sausage um, that only contains sage, salt, pepper, and pork. Nothing else. A proper Lincolnshire sausage. Um, so I'm going to do the pork pie now. Uh, the pork pie is one I was taught, and it's basically the same ingredients that I can tell as a Melton Mowbray one, so I think it's just a traditional traditional one without all the extras, with all, your sea, all your sages and your thymes and the mace and nutmegs and all the rest of it. It's just basically a pork pie. So we've got here <clears throat> one kilo ground pork, uh, minced pork, um, what do they call it here, sorry, again? Picada. Picada, it, and it's on a coarse, I coarse asked, plate. I asked them to grind it on a coarse grind. Yeah. So you don't end up with a paste. Can you see it's kind of a, it's, it, it's thick bits. Yeah. Um, you could do it, chop it if you want by hand, but it's just easy like this. Um, okay, so we want, I'll just turn this machine back on. For one kilo, it does call, it, it's five grams of salt for one kilo. However, we've discovered that this salt here in Spain is a bit more salty than UK table salt, so I'm gonna go a little bit shy. I think I'm gonna go four grams, but the recipe does call for five. Um, I've done other things with this salt at the recipe and it's been a little bit too salty for me. It's just been a little bit over the top, so I'm gonna go four grams of, of salt. Take a little bit out. Well, these scales seem to be uh, having a fit. That's right, take it out. That's an awful lot of salt you've got there. Okay. Half as much again. There you go. No. They just, they just seem to, to take forever to, to go. Yes, they do. They're old. <sighs> a bit like me. And then five grams of white pepper. But I think um, I should have done this as a separate entity, really, because now I can't take it out. But I'm on, it'll do. get it out of the blooming jar. Go on. There. And that's it. And then just pour it in. And then you get your hands in and give it a mix. Having gone to the trouble of getting a coarse ground pork, much as it's fun to get in there and really squish it, don't do so till you get a paste. Yeah, you just, oh. just just mix it in. Yeah. And um, sorry, I'm taking over Chris's kitchen here. But if if you <laughs> mush it together too much, you end up with like a pate, and you get a really really densely textured pork pie, and it's not pleasant. No, no, it's not. And you want a a good amount of fat in there as well. Ideally, you want 25% fat as well. Keep it moist. Yeah. Which is which is also a similar which is also what you want for the sausages anyway. Uh, just give it a good mix in. Food processors, no good, but um, on a food, like a Kenwood Chef sort of thing with like a dough hook or something like that, you can do it like that, which is, or, or, or a beater, but not for too long, um, which is how you do it. Or well, we used to do it in the butchers where I was working last. We just put, but they're gonna be in a large amount. Yeah. But just do this by hand. You just, just have to give it a mix. 
we'll squeeze it together. Um, if you find it gets really, really dry and sticky, you can add a little bit, a tiny little bit of water, but which I might actually have to do to this one because it is quite, quite tacky. It just doesn't take long. But as Lillian said, don't don't take mix it into a paste. But just combine it well. And I'd say that's about right. It doesn't take long, it's only a small amount. Welcome back to Chris's kitchen. Chris is currently not here, so Lillian has taken over. <laughs> Please leave a message after the town. <laughs> <laughs> Beep. So I'm making a hot water pastry, flour, salt and pepper, lard. I wasn't able to get plain lard at the supermarket yesterday. I could only get this manteca de cerdo ibérico. And whether it's got an ibérico pork flavour to it, because ibérico pork is delicious, we've had that, and how salty potentially it might be because of that, what I'm not going to do is add the salt to this. I'm just going to do a plain one. There's enough salt seasoning in the meat filling anyway, so it's not a problem. So, 175 grams of lard, 125 of water, and your salt if you're using it, if you've got plain lard, melted in a pan. Just bring it, not quite to a boiling, but melted, and then 500 grams of plain flour. Mixed together, looks like a, looks like the beginnings of a shoe pastry. Mix it, leave it to cool down so that it's actually malleable with your hands, then you're able to use it. What I'm going to be using is some um, trays for Yorkshire puddings, muff muffins, muffin trays. I haven't got a pork pie tray. I'm going to do them in this rather than actually raising, you can hand raise them. It's just, it's just a pain. <laughs> I can do it, it looks the part. If you want quick pork pies, push them in here like you, like you would make a, 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 a mince pie, something like that, and go for it. So we'll get on with this bit. It looks like normal lard as well, because lard is basically lard anyway. Yeah. yeah, no, it has no no intrinsic smells. Okay. And how much is this we putting in? 175. Grams. Grams. We've had to store our recipe on <laughs> Google because we, we moved and uh, just in case any any of our uh, recipes were, tro were lost, the two or three important ones we stored on Google as well, so it's easier. And we can't find our recipe book, so fortunately we had them backed up, didn't we? Yeah. <laughs> Luckily. Google. <laughs> Google is my friend, and Google Keep is my saviour. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. Come on. There we go. One hundred and seventy-five. It's. It's fluffier than lard, it's as if it's been whipped. Yeah. Than what yeah, I'm used weird. to using. What, does it taste salty? Just, just, you, you can do the raw butter thing. No. No. Okay, then I'll go with the salt then. But, oh. No, I'm not going to go with the salt. It has a delicious flavour to it. Okay. Sorry, guys. I know I'm eating fat. Yeah, but... well, don't, don't have any more. I, you see, I can't even do that with butter or margarine. It, it, ooh, it, but, ooh, ooh, no, I can't do it. <laughs> um, but it ha it's not salty per se, but it has a flavour. I'm not going to ruin the flavour okay. by adding salt. Okay. That's fair enough. And the water was how much? 125. Okay, and then it goes over to the cooker to be melted, you know, heated up, yep. and so it all melts and integrates in nicely. Um, do you put the pepper in now, or do you add the pepper in later? You don't pepper it, it's pastry. You said, you said you were said putting salt. salt and pepper. No, I said salt. Oh, my if, I said, if I said pepper, I didn't mean to. It's water, <laughs> lard, salt. No pepper. No pepper. Don't put pepper in it. Don't put pepper in it. Don't. Unless you like pepper, that much. No, you don't in your pepper pastry. pastry. You never mm -hmm. pepper pe savoury or, or or otherwise. You don't pepper pastry. 
No. What, what if I want no. to put... No. Oh, okay. But... Lillian's kitchen. Okay. No. There you go. How exciting is that? Melted lard and water. Yeah, well, it's nice and hot. Nice and hot, Not yes. too hot to burn to, for it to go wrong, but it's nice and hot. Yeah, you don't actually want it bubbling. Because then if you put the fl as they've put the flour in, it actually burns the flour, you end up with black flour. But I just know where I would put my hand anywhere near that. 500 grams of flour. Mixed to a paste. And if you can hear any that whining noise in the background, that's Loki and uh, Dover playing. Yes. <clears throat> in fact, I'll just uh, do a little interlude while Lillian gives that a quick mix and show you. Yes, Peggy, we caught you. Hello, Kai. Um, Dover. So I've got Kai with a big bum in the way and Dover. Hey, up, mate. Anyway, there's nothing coming out of here for you guys. Right, I've got to go back in now. I've got to film again. Yes. No. There you go. <laughs> Cover out the way. Mind out the way, dogs. Come on, mind. They can move. Come on. Good boy, Dover. No, you're not allowed in. You're not allowed in a professional kitchen. You're not You're not trained yet. You're not qualified. Get your nose out. No. Come, 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 come. <laughs> yeah, that'll teach you. You're not qualified to be in here. You're a dog. You don't have opposable thumbs. Okay, so after my little thing with the dogs, <clears throat> I've come back and literally more or less processed all, all the pastry stuff. So all I did was mix it in the saucepan yeah. to, and it, it forms and it, as I said, it reminds me of shoe pastry. You just see it all disappear. Obviously, it looks very similar. It's, it's touchable now. It wasn't to start off with. And you just want to mix it till it's all mixed in like any other ordinary pastry and also like any other pastry do not overwork it you will regret it later what the, you mean like i do <laughs> <laughs> leave it alone <laughs> step away from the it's pastry leave it alone <laughs> gonna leave that to rest now 20 minutes and on to the next stage welcome back to lillian's kitchen I've allowed this to rest. Just cut it with a knife. Can you see the texture? It's cool on the outside. It's still tepid on the inside. Much as it's easier to work when it's cold, once you've got flat areas to deal with. If it's too cold, it'll just snap. Think about fat when it go when it goes cold. Butter fat. I need to keep some for lids. What I'm going to do with these because. These aren't non-stick, because I'm going to make rustic little bases so they're easy to lift out. I don't want to have to tip them out when I'm, when I'm done with them. Ish. I suppose you could use a little uh, the end of a rolling pin inside to form them up the sides. I'm just going to use my fingers. Can you can you get the camera in there? Can you see? Well, it's a bit colder. It wants to crack. So it's, it's easier to work it if it's a little bit warmer. You don't want it too thick at the bottom because you don't want a soggy bottom. You don't want to upset Mary. And I've got lots of filling, so these are nice deep little uh, pans. So I want a nice height on them. So, I filled my little cases. I've made little lids. I don't have a rolling pin. So, just squished it by hand. Rustic. Rustic, rustico. Yes. Cut it using the, uh, oh, this mug, the lid of this mug. They're massive, massive minus the right size. Little cases. Meat. Now you roll it into a ball. 
Is this, this, is this Lillian's kitchen or Chris's kitchen? This is Lillian's kitchen. Right, let me talk then. But this was this is always my favourite part of making pork pies as a, a trainee butcher. So try and get your size. You see how much you're going to need in it. You don't just put it, drop it in. You don't put it in and push because you'll get air bubbles around the bottom. The whole point is to chuck it in. That then dissipates any air in the bottom and you then don't have any problems. Yes. They're going to be a bit full, darling. Or maybe a little bit less then. <laughs> I, I, I can't believe I just heard myself say that. <laughs> Have a good idea, to be fair. One more to go after this one. How delicate those little fingies are. Peach, peach, peach. <laughs> And the oven's already on preheating. Now we have an oven that uh, is either on, or off. not quite on, a bit less on, or off. There's no temperature control on it. So uh, things like this tend to be a bit hit and miss at the final finish. It's uh, what they call, everybody calls it here, a campo oven. It's got three settings. But it's not very... Good. Good between the different settings. No. You can no. have it on one or three. And it's also and still burns. But it's also ambient temperature dependent as well. Yeah. It's a butane gas one. Uh, variations in atmospheric pressure and temperature and everything else like that also affects the gas. <laughs> so it's just it can be very very hit and miss. So. Uh, we can't give you a real cooking time for these that we're going to be doing. It's going to be a case of leave them in for half an hour, open the door, turn them round, give them another half an hour, and that might be it. But there again, it might not. And they may also not come out brown either. <laughs> yes, because all the heat comes from this. In a proper English oven... You're at 180. I was at 180, and they were about 40 minutes. Yeah. Let's go quit looking at me. Pies are out of the oven. Yes, yes they are. They look good. They do look good. Uh, done in, done in, a, in like the fan assisted oven where we used to do it back in the UK. There was a nice, nice just, darker brown. I've uh, got more golden brown than but this this oh. oven. It's heat yeah. only from the bottom. Yeah, we don't want to burn the bombs, do we? No. We don't want to burn the pork pies bomb. <laughs> and to brown anything, what I found is you've got to turn the grill on, but not all the grill jets work, so it's just a bit of a nightmare. Okay, as I said before, um gonna make a little bit of gelatin just to go in. Yeah. Well, all I'm going to use is I use Let me just move that over there. Maggie stock cubes. They're very salty, so I'm not gonna use a lot. I just want a little bit of flavour. I've used what a quarter of one? Maybe, maybe, maybe not, not even. Maybe not even. Um, sorry, I turned away there. I've had gelatin soaking in cold water. I don't need much for these. They're gonna need what? Half a teacup's worth? Not even, I don't think, no. With how full they were, there shouldn't be that much gap to fill. No. It's almost a joke to make this small amount, isn't it? I know, would it be, would it be better to make a little bit more so? Because we're using gelatin sheet, aren't we? Yes. It, it, could it end up being like rubber? I don't know, I'm asking, I don't know. No, it's because it's six sheets to half a litre, if you look at the instructions. Okay. Six sheets to half a litre of liquid. Okay. It's... Yeah. I know, it's really weird stuff. <laughs> really, really weird stuff. It reminds me of something that isn't. Try this one first. Go for it. Go for it. Go for it. Go 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 go
Still draining, still going in. I know. <coughs> but I don't want it to have a soup around the outside. No, we'll leave it at that then. So, remember how I said it was Lillian's kitchen and Chris stopped touching everything? He decided to help. Yeah, well, I thought you were trying to help. You see, yeah, no, I no, thought no. many hands make light work. No. Your hands make broken pastry. Go I'll on. eat that one then. Yes, you will. <laughs> but I'll just, I'll that try be to your, be a helpful Herbert. That'll be your penance. You'll just have to eat it. Yes. I'll take my punishment gladly. So, punishment time. Yes. Here's one I broke earlier. Ah, maybe there was method in your madness. <laughs> this is you would get to eat a hot pie. Well, so some may say that. Apologies for all this. There should be on there making it look pretty. Oh, yes. That's the right colour. And all that pink meat that you're having pork pies sometimes. And obviously not gelatin because we're eating it hot. Yes. Right, you have the first taste. It mm. smells really, really good. It might be a bit hot yet though. It's a bit hot for me. Oh! Oh, yeah, yeah, you see. You're not breaking it up. Yeah, took it on the floor. Just, it smells nice. Too hot. <laughs> now pastry does have a flavour from that Iberico. It's mm. not a horrible flavour, it's mm, a nice, nice. flavour, but it's not yeah. what I was expe expecting. Mm. Um, yeah, the meat's definitely not over salted. No. Thank God. Or over peppered. Ooh, hot. Yes, it's very hot. Mm. Salt was close. In the meat, mm. yes, yeah. But I think maybe next time round, a little bit of salt in the, uh, in, in, the, the in the pastry. Yeah. But we'd never tried it before, so we had on the side of not too much salt. But, um, yeah, so overall, I would give that a definite 8 out of 10. Oh, I failed, only an 8 out of 10. No, no, because that's awesome, considering we've never used that, that lard before. Mm. Mm. Really good. Welcome back to Chris's kitchen. Yes. Um, We've got half a kilo of uh, the mince, the, the mince mix left from the, doing the pork pie. So I'm going to make, um, I'm not going to call it Lincolnshire sausage because the dimensions are not exactly going to be correct, but it's going to be done the same way, but um, the weights are just so fine because for this, it's going to be next to impossible to weigh it out properly. Yeah, so we're going to go Lincolnshire-esque flavour sausage meat, which yes. will then turn into burgers. Yep, so we've got the breadcrumbs. Um, you soak these. Uh, and you just give it a quick mix. Like this, obviously, when you're doing it in a larger batch, you do a larger amount. Now, uh, this is in grams, again, but because they're not exact, because of the exact weights, I'm going to do it by eye. Um, you always add the sage to the rusk or bread, wet breadcrumbs. Don't add it to the meat because yeah. it mixes better. Yeah. In this case, we've just grated some uh, bread buns that we left purposely to go stale. We have also in the past here used migas you can buy in the supermarket, but they have a bit of oil in them because they've been fried. Yeah. They don't work for everything, but they do make awesome stuffing. Stuffing. Yes, they do. So, just some sage. 
not a vast amount. That's a teaspoon. It looks a lot, but it's not a lot by weight. It is a tiny amount. And that's the pork that's already had the salt and pepper because it was yeah. the mix for the uh, inside of the pork pies. The pork pies, yeah. Let's give it a quick mix. Um, and basically the breadcrumbs and everything are rusk as most, most uh, commercial places use now is uh, a binder for the fat so you don't lose too much fat you have to wet it first otherwise it doesn't work and you just mix a small amount in we're not going heavy on the on the bread uh, and just give it a mix again I'll turn this into burgers as opposed to sausages because one we don't have sausage skins and two it's just easier with burgers and give it a nice mix and then you can work you actually work this a little bit more than you would do for the pork pie just to incorporate it all And uh, that'll do, it's got a nice texture to it.